Given an unsorted integer array, nums, return the smallest missing positive integer. Create an algorithm that runs in O of n time complexity and utilizes a constant amount of space. The smallest missing positive isn't the first positive number that's missing in the range of elements in the input, but the first positive number that's missing if we start from one. Worth noting. And this is part of the cyclic sort pattern. So everything we're going to do is typically going to rely on cyclic sort in some way or form. So a lot of the solutions we're going to see in the next few, uh, the next two or three videos under this pattern all look really similar, right? Because again, cyclic sort is in it. So the first missing positive number is three, because you can see one, two, four, five. So three is missing here. And um, if we If we look at this example, um, the first missing positive number starting from one, right? In this case is one, right? Because you have two, three, four, but there's no one here. And then in this case, we have one, two, three, four, the first missing positive number, because everything is represented here is five. And in this case, we start from seven, eight, nine, ten. We've skipped everything from one to six, but the first missing one is going to be one. Okay, hope that makes sense. So imagine we had this array. I wanted to find the first missing positive number. Uh, in this case, it would be two. Two should be the answer. But um, we're going to perform cyclic sort, and that looks like this branch of code right here. This is the bulk of it, really, um, when you're performing cyclic sort. So we're, we're looping through every single item, right, in the numbers array, right, that we we get the length, initialize the cursor, start from the first element, and then while the first element is less than the length of the array, we are checking what is at i minus one. Um, so the value, right, at i, and the value at i, and then we subtract one from it, whatever it is. Again, we to just account for off by one errors because our programming language is zero index. And so we get the value at i, then we check if it belongs in the range. So that is if it's positive, it's a positive number, and it's less than the entire length of the array because everything goes from one to n. And now we also check, the second check and last check is if it's at the wrong index. So whatever is that in the i should correspond to the value at i. And that's those are some other conditions for cyclic sort to work, right? If you look look it up and check out the, the pattern intro video for this, uh, uh, solution like I believe it's two videos behind and so if it belongs in the range and it's at the wrong index then we do the swap a right? very simple swap otherwise we increment our cursor move to the next thing okay so we'll move to the next thing if it doesn't belong in the range let's say it's a negative number and if it's at the right index if it's at the right position then we just move the cursor instead and so that is the gist of it, right? And this is very similar to what we what you saw in the last video, right? This pattern is what you need to know about to be able to solve problems that fit this mold. And now if we step three with this image, we I starts off here, right? So it, it came here, it checks three. Three does belong in the range, right? Because we have uh, one, two, three, four items here. So three belongs in the range. However, it's not at the right position. It's at the wrong position. And so this is going to be true, right? Yeah. Is that, a, is that a wrong index and it belongs in the range? So this branch is going to trigger, right? This branch right here is going to trigger. And when it does, it moves what was here prior, right? Puts three in its right place and moves this here. And now i hasn't been updated. So i is still going to, i is, this loop is going to happen again. Only this time, i is going to be a negative number. So it's not going to be a number that doesn't belong in the range. And so it's not going to move what is here anywhere, right? Because because this is negative, the cursor represented by blue has has shifted from the first position to the second position. It's not going to trigger here. That's this branch here. It's going to happen. And then we check four. Four belongs in the range, and it was at the wrong index as well. So we're going to swap it from the swap. So now an instance of this has happened. I, I didn't get to change. However, now it checks. Okay, I've swapped out what was there before, right? One for four. Now I'm going to check is one in the right position. And what one belongs in the range. It's in the wrong position. So it's going to swap it, swap out with what, what was, with where it's supposed to be. And you have that. 
the cursor is still here, i, our cursor is still here, but then it's a negative number, so it doesn't belong in the range, so it's just gonna move on and keep checking. Um, i is gonna increment up to the end, they skip all that, and then lastly, we finally break out of this loop because i is just gonna keep going, right? Because again, the remaining things are at the right index, so this is gonna be false, and they belong in the range. So this is going to be false, and I is just going to move on till it hits the end of nums length, and then finally, 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 this is when we return, where we generate what we're going to return. We loop through the entire array, and do a simple check. Right, X is our new cursor x. In this case, I use x instead of i. Whatever it is, plus one, is it equal to the value that's in there? Because that's how it's supposed to be, right? In the problem setup, and if it isn't, then just return. Um, x plus one. So in this case, right, it's going to loop. It's going to start from zero, right? Yes, it's going to start from zero. It's going to expect one here, right? It's going to expect two here, and because um, because two isn't equal to what is what, what turned out what ended up being here negative one, we just return x our cursor's position, right? Because our cursor represents what should be there plus one, and uh, once we, once we're done with that. In this case, this is a happy pappy path, right? We return that. Otherwise, we return if they're all in the correct spot. We're just going to pick up um, the nums length plus one. If you remember in the list of examples I gave in the beginning of the video, um, you just return the first thing after the end of the length of the array. And you're done. Safe and neat. And we have succeeded in what the problem wanted, right? in the sense that we did this in O of n time and our space complexity of cyclic sort is O of 1 because we need to use a constant amount of space. And that's all there is to this problem. Thank you. Like, subscribe, share. Bye.